Hello everyone and welcome to the first in my science fiction station series where I'm going to be reading chapters from this book to you. So that is Il Noblet Elmer and the Alien Water Thieves by myself, Catherine Rose Newey. You can find the details of that book on my website, catherinerosenewey.com. Um, and it's also available on Amazon. Now the ebook should be available for free on Amazon. Um, there are also worksheets that go with this uh, reading. So you'll need to download these off my website. And it's a two page worksheet called Science Fiction Station for chapter one, which is crashing on the way to Earth. Um, so there'll be activities to do while you're listening to me reading as well as a second page something for you to do after I've finished reading. Okay so let's get to today's reading. Oops I almost forgot to explain the worksheet to you before I start reading the chapter. So on the worksheet part A um, of chapter one it says there are gazillions of universal beings in the universe Il Noblet Elmer travels in an Amsport ship ju with just a few of them from planet Gapiton who were genetically altered to appear to be from other planets can you identify their features such as physical features and voices complete the table as you listen to me reading or you read for yourself then draw a mini sketch of each one and so all of the beings are listed down the left side the universal species name and you've got a column to write down some outstanding features and then you've got another column on the end where you can sketch a mini diagram of each one how you think they look okay let's get reading chapter one crashing on the way to earth i remember the trip to earth clearly and not because it was a good experience there were thousands of us gapetonians being astromorphed around the universe after waiting for ages and not really being allowed to do anything while we waited they called it something like spacetons pre-morphing we were eventually transported to the exit area and strapped into our seats in each Astromorph Spaceton Warp Transmuter, or AMSPORT for short. Of course, the seats and straps had to be various different shapes and sizes, depending on what type of being you had been astromorphed into. As you would expect, Kujikanen and the other Gapetonian Ajosians had the most difficult time because they were very light and kept floating around. Their straps couldn't really hold them too tightly, or they would infuse into their bodies, or perhaps go right through them. We were divided into various sections of the numerous amsports, depending on which spacitons of the universe we were going to. I was squashed in next to a Gapetonian Manex logger, who looked very similar to an Irvian, only tinier and grey-skinned, and a Gapetonian Snigger Lodgerian, who was rather large and round, and who made these constant, awful sniggering and sniffing sounds. So in part A of the worksheet, chapter one worksheet, there are all of the universal beings mentioned that you're going to hear about in the chapter. So you've just heard about a few there. So as you go and as I read, fill in the details on your sheet. The journey started off okay, I guess. Even in our state of calm sleeping, a bit like being comatose but aware, we could sense and hear each other and feel the speed and movement of the AMSPORT. At one point my biotube seemed to come loose and I struggled to breathe. Some thick gooey liquid leaked out all over my chest. I managed to squeeze the end of the biotube back into the bio container and felt relieved as I could breathe again more smoothly. I remember tossing and turning a little as much as I could while being strapped in. I think it was because the Gabatonian Snigger Logerian was making these disgusting snorting sounds and pretty much the whole time. At some point, while I was actually managing to properly calm sleep, something woke me up. I didn't quite know what at first. I woke up slowly and looked around me. Most of the Gabatonians were still calm sleeping, 
My two companions were slouched over in their seats, the Manax logger so far against mine that she must have been leaning on me. I felt my arm, and sure enough, there was a slight grey imprint on it and some goo from the Manax logger's face. Suddenly the Amsport lurched and I grabbed onto the sides of my seat. Some of the Gapetonians moaned or woke up and looked a little panicked. The Gapetonian Millifantians at the opposite end of the section started braying loudly as they do when frightened. It was quite a sight. They are very small and furry, with tiny limbs but have large noses. I suppose you might call them trunks, like Erdian elephant trunks, and they use their noses to communicate in deep and resonant tones. The more afraid they are, the louder and more cacophonous the sound. Then the Amsport veered and turned almost upside down. Our straps held us in, but we were all screaming, braying, crying, grunting in fear, fully awake now. Alarms and lights started going on and off continuously. The Amsport began shuddering and making terrible rattling and knocking sounds. We held on our seats as best we could. The Gapetonian Ajosians were floating sideways and struggling to say, stay in their seats, howling loudly. We were all really scared. This was a very serious emergency. After the most terrible shaking and banging noises, while we held on for life, the Amsport hit something, and we slid along bumping and being thrown about with the most awful grinding noises under our feet. Eventually it hit something again and came to a sudden stop. We all breathed and let go a little of our seats or companions or seat belts or whatever else we had been hanging on to with all our might. We had made a crash landing somewhere in the universe and we knew it wasn't one of our destiny planets. We were instructed to stay where we were and remain strapped in. When the Gapetonian Spaciton facilitators, the crew or GSFs, weren't looking, I stole a glance out of one of the windows. We seemed to be on a very dusty planet. There were red swirling dust clouds and rocks everywhere. That's what we must have hit which stopped us, a large rock. There was still some moaning and howling from the various Gapetonian astromorphed beings. I looked around me and could see that some Gapetonian Festromothians seemed to be bleeding some sort of yellow gooey substance and an unpleasant smell was reaching my nostrils, probably from them. As the GSFs weren't nearby, I undid my seatbelt and jumped up to check if they were okay. Unfortunately for me, the mixture of having been in a state of calm sleeping and travelling at warp folding speeds, plus this planet's low gravitational force, meant I simply fell over, but slowly, and hit the floor. I managed to sit up, then carefully stood up. I discovered if I slid my earthian feet along the floor, rather than lifted them to walk, it seemed to stabilise me. I reached the Gapetonian Festromothians, who were gurgling in their strange, bubbly Festromothian language. After some talking, babbling and shouting, spluttering and waving our arms or appendages about, I understood they were trying to explain that their body fluids were not contained in lower gravity states. Luckily, at this stage, it seems the GSFs had been in contact with Gapeton and most of our AMSPORT systems were repaired and switched back on. Thankfully, that seemed to stop the Festromothians leaking, but I have to, had to cover my Erdian nose because the awful smell from their yellow goo was still around. After what seemed like at least an iconic had passed, but in reality it must have been maybe a few Erdian hours in which we were waiting in our seats and not doing anything interesting and calm sleeping in between, the Amsport was fixed enough and we managed to get back to our journey. We warp rotated up and we're off again. The rest of the journey went mostly okay, except for the fact that someone somehow had forgotten to deliver the Gapetonian Mucherians when we went into their spaciton of the universe. They were rather small and quiet, so it was decided that they would have to travel with us to Earth and then be delivered to their destiny planet later. We were supposed to invisibilise the Amsport as we came near to the Erdian Spaciton, because Erdians are known to be quite warlike and will try to shoot at any alien craft, even though their weapons aren't very advanced. But because the Amsport was still having some technical problems, 
the GSF said we couldn't invisibilize and had to just hope that no Earthians would spot us. We set a course for a less inhabited part of Earth, somewhere on the South American continent, and warp rotated down carefully into a very overgrown jungle. There were two Gapetonian Earthians besides me being delivered to Earth, Sasaskin and Madeskalar. We were checked over by the Gapetonian biogeometric medicians and given the all clear. Then we had to enter the atmospheric mixol section of the AMSPORT to practice breathing, walking, eating and sleeping and all that kind of Earthian stuff to make sure our biogenes were basically doing everything they should like we were proper Earthians. This took three Earthian days and nights. On day four we were allowed to take our first steps outside on our new planet. The three of us were very excited as you can imagine. Although we were wearing Gapetonian ethereal biosuits, just as a precaution, we stepped out of the AMSPORT carefully. The heat and the loud sounds of the jungle hit us instantaneously. The heat was almost unbearable and it felt sticky. The insects, birds and animals of the jungle singing and calling all at once made it almost impossible to hear the GSFs in my headgear. We were surrounded by a lot of trees and creepers. It was so thick and entangled that I wondered how any Earthians could live here. Then I remembered that very few Earthians lived in this part of their planet and that mostly wild animals would be found here. That's why we had purposefully chosen to land here for our orbular pre-morphing. I wandered off making my way through a small gap in the plant life, pulling plants and trailing creepers out of my way as I went. My fellow Gapetonian Earthians were somewhere behind me I could see insects and arachnids and large and hairy ones everywhere. I was glad to be wearing my ethereal bio suit after all. The forest was very hot and wet with water droplets and mud everywhere. Through the choking trees I could see a swamp. Next thing I heard a loud slithering and rustling sound in the tree above me and looked up. Wrapped around the branches of a very thick and gnarled tree was the biggest snake I could ever imagine. I think it was some type of anaconda. The snakes, these snakes are the largest on earth, but I knew that they weren't venomous. The snakes seemed to be eyeing me as if I might make a good meal. No one knows if they eat humans, but they are big enough to. So I backed away and turned to make my way towards the AMSPORT. As I turned around to find the way I'd come, all I could see was plants and trees and creepers and lots of creepy crawlies. I was lost. Surely the AMSPORT was nearby. I hadn't wandered very far, had I? Suddenly there was a humming and whirring sound far away, which was getting louder and coming closer. I looked up and saw a small Earthian aeroplane flying overhead. It must have been some sort of tourist or perhaps a scientific aircraft, and they must have spotted something in the forest as they banked and turned around to come and look at it again. Probably our AMSPORT. I climbed up a branch of a nearby tree and looked in the general area where the plane seemed to be scanning. Thankfully, I spotted the AMSPORT through the leaves and branches and hurried over. It seems the AMSPORT still wasn't completely fixed and the GSFs were trying to invisibilise it without much success. The aeroplane was making another turn and was nearing us. Something had to be done. We couldn't be found by Earthians. Finally, the GSFs managed to telecommune with Gapiton who had to try the complicated process of Maxillion auto-blanking of the Earthians' memories and wiping all their flying instruments of any records. We watched as the plane eventually flew off, back on its original course. So it seems to have worked. At least we hope so. We were called back to the AMSPORT for some rest. Tomorrow was our final day of orbular pre-morphing, before we were to be left on Earth. Okay, so how did you get on with the worksheets? Um, so part A, you had to fill in some more details of all the different creatures that I was reading about, um, their features, and you get a chance to draw some little sketches of what you think they look like, and I'd really love to see those. I'll talk about that in a minute. And now you get to do another fun thing. You get to make up your own alien creature. So part B of the worksheet is a um, 
Gabatonian scientist form where you get to fill in all the details of this creature that you imagine. So it says, imagine you're a Gapatonian scientist. Your job is to log the different universal species and you've just discovered a new type of alien being on a previously undiscovered planet. Complete the form with your discovery. So there's all kinds of things that you can get to fill in. You can get to make up a name of your species, planet of origin, where it is, what languages it speaks, if it's got any special powers, um, how does it travel, does it pose a danger to any other species, that kind of thing. And then you also get to draw the face of that creature as well as the whole body of that creature. So have fun with that. And if you head over to my website, katherinerosenewy.com, and sign up for all my worksheets, posters and newsletters. You'll get access to all the worksheets, these and others. I do uh, create worksheets quite often, so there's a regular supply of them that you'll be able to find on the website. And I'm going to try and set up a gallery for the Science Fiction Station worksheets. So if you want to email me uh, your beautiful drawings and all the fun things that you've been doing, that's great. I'll put them on the website as long as you've got your parents' permission for that. Okay, hope you had fun and I'll see you next time for Chapter 2. Over and out.